demonstrated on the beat. Thank you for coming back to me. I appreciate all the time y'all gave me. First of all, let me give y'all a thank you for running up them views for the Ash Greninja and Legends ZA video. Really, really was proud of that video. Didn't really think it was going to go too far, but I'm glad it did. But anyway, let's get this video to about 5 likes and we can push, the, push it a little further into the algorithm, shall we? So, a bit of a far-fetched idea. However, I am willing to push the narrative just a little further than anticipated, right? So, we all know Mega Evolution. There have been 48 Mega Evolutions since its conception back in 2013, and it's now 2024. We're not getting Pokemon Legends ZA until, mm, I want to say at least spring of next year. So let's say between March and May of next year. This is a video where I'm going to give you guys an idea. Now, if it is true that it's going to follow the Legends Arceus formula, where obviously we're going to have the OG Kalo starters in the wild, and 4chan leaks, I would talk about them, but I'm not going to actually incorporate them in this, in this video because, like I said, those are all purely speculation, and strictly so is this video here. So... Will Mega Evolution be permanent? I know that sounds pretty stupid to a, to a few of you. It might actually sound a little far-fetched. But hear me out. Now, we bringing into, into concept right quick, we know that the Mega Rings are what trigger Mega Evolution for certain for Pokemon that are able to Mega Evolve. However, similar similar to the similar to Scarlet and Violet. Now, again, going back to my Legend ZA video, the Stellar type is a prime example of this. I want to say that there is, let's say, for example, an Apex Chestnut, right? Let's say an Apex Chestnut in the wild. <coughs> Excuse me, an Apex Chestnut in the wild. Now, similar to how you have, you had the open world aspect, you know, you catch Apex Pokemon, which are the Pokemon that are larger than the originals and with glowing red eyes, right? Let's say instead of like they did following the formula that they presented in Legends of Arceus and adding the Tarasso effect from Scarlet and Violet, right? It's a wild a wild apex chestnut that can mega evolve by itself. And catching said chestnut would effectively give you the ability to mega evolve said chestnut. Now, obviously, Legends ZA is confirmed to take place in the past. How far? Not sure. And the little information we did get wasn't enough to clarify whether or not this is true or if it is untrue. So, back to the concept. You're walking through and you see a wild apex chestnut and as soon as you approach it, it mega evolves. Or, to even make it more entertaining, it is a chestnut that is already Mega Evolved, but upon catching it, it reverts back to its original form. Now, we know that Mega Evolution is actually an extension of the Pokemon's true potential. Now, we know this. We have multiple Pokemon that have proven this, like Mega Aggron, Mega, Ch I was about to say Mega Charmander, Mega Charizard, X and Y, and then we have... <clears throat> We have the concept that every time a Pokemon is defeated in battle, they revert back to their original form if they are Mega Evolved. Let's put that back out there. It is a Apex Mega Evolved, ch um, an Apex Mega Chestnut. The only way to stop it is to not only catch it, but also obtain it through defeating it. And after catching Mega Chestnut, you also unlock its ability to Mega Evolve for its own personal battles. Now, 
to each his own for some people that don't like this don't like that idea and let me say it like this many times have I seen in the tournaments during X and Y's time period as well as you know <clears throat> Sun and Moons as well people did heavily rely on Mega Evolution during its time in the spotlight I can't say that that's a bad thing but what I will say is simply this if there is a chance that giving us the open world aspect and catching mega Pokemon in the wild much like I talked about in my video for Ash Greninja being in Legends DA and again not going to talk about the 4chan leaks I've already seen them and I will not include them in this video because I don't feel like they're I just feel like they're <clears throat> false propaganda I feel like the idea is you're going to obtain a way to mega evolve certain Pokemon if not Pokemon you've already obtained but why I say that there are Pokemon that can mega evolve by themselves let's take Gyarados for example Gyarados is known to be one of the most ferocious Pokemon in the entire series it's not to be played with it's one of those Pokemon that attacks on sight and even in Legends Arceus for example you do inherently see a lot of hostile Pokemon which means Pokemon that would pose you a threat Pokemon that don't pose you a threat I'm simply saying that the concept behind having Pokemon that already mega evolve in the wild would actually add more flavor to Legends DA because given what is already out there because <clears throat> we already have 48 mega evolutions and I I think it's 10 or 15 I'm not sure I might be wrong somebody in the comments tell me if I'm wrong that Legends ZA is going to have at least 10 to 15 mega evolutions and because we never did really get I would say DLC for Legends Arceus considering in the time it came out it came out right behind the the Diamond Pearl remakes or right after the Diamond Pearl remakes and you know with the Scarlet and Violet DLCs we also got those two DLCs within like eight months of each other so relatively we never had like a lot of time to really like absorb too much of the DLC aspect now if if my assumption is correct that they're going to put Pokemon Gen X right after Legends ZA if not after the black and white remakes which again still surprised that they never they didn't decide to do a black and white remake although there's part of me that does believe that they're going to incorporate some form of black and white in Legends ZA because we did get a lot of Pokemon from Sun and Moon and black and white in the last DLC for Scarlet and Violet so given all of that information I want to say being able to catch mega Pokemon on their own versus have to go through the process of paying, you know, for an Ampharosite or a Gyaradosite or a Charizard or a Char or a Charizardite, you know, just paying out the pocket for those Mega Stones, and then obviously we got to take in concept. Like I said, this is a past version of X and Y. So we still have, like I said, we still have 48 Mega Evolutions to go with. And at the time the X and Y came out, the National Dex was still a thing. So I don't believe they're going to really, like, cram too many Pokemon in in Legends EA. Especially the ones that can't Mega Evolve or already. I know specifically they're going to take extreme precaution, if not overall, with... You know the idea of every other Pokemon that's been that's able to Mega Evolve. I'm, I'm pretty sure most of those Pokemon are going to come back. And with that being 48 Pokemon on its own, and then that's like that's almost 100 Pokemon in its own right. Because when you think about it, every one of those Pokemon has an evolutionary line, except like a handful of them. I know Pinsir doesn't have an evolution. Mega Heracross doesn't have an evolution. You know stuff like that. So it's like Pokemon that don't have evolutionary lines versus Pokemon that do it it, it kind of defeats the purpose but sticking to the sticking to the concept of it I want to say that if we are given the ability to catch mega Pokemon by themselves in the open world it would actually make the value of ZNA more profitable given the fact that 
you would have multiple YouTubers saying, oh, this is where you get this this mega, this is where you get that mega. Like, okay, for example, going back to Legends Arceus. Legends Arceus, when you get to the snow, re the snow part of the region, you have a Garchomp that is probably the strongest in the region, if I'm not mistaken, because I know for a fact that that particular Garchomp was like level 90 at the time of being captured. So when you take into consideration, it's probably the strongest in, in Legends Arceus by itself because it outmatches practically every other legendary that, you know, that, that's in the in the game itself. So every, because every other legendary or every other Pokemon after that is relatively in between level 70 and 80. So it's like you're not going to really catch a Pokemon that strong. So it's like if you were to catch like a Mega Tyranitar in the mountainside of the Kalos region, like and exactly a Mega, I can only imagine that that Mega probably would be at least level 75, if not level 80. Because I know, because I, why I'm even saying that, because if you go back to the Isle of Armor in Sword and Shield, the first thing you see when you walk out after doing the introduction, you see a, a Whale Lord that's level 80. So it's not like Pokemon doesn't want to lightly salt and pepper the concept that you can see these Pokemon. They want you to know that these Pokemon are in fact available. So it's like when you see, like, out of the entire Isle of, Isle of Armor, you literally have that one particular Whale Lord. Now, I know Whale Lord is not really the best of the bunch, but it's like you see a Whale Lord that's directly in your field of vision, and it's not even, it's not like it's not like a bad Pokemon. It's just the fact like it's a Pokemon that's really in the open world and it's level 80, making it the strongest in the entire DLC. So, frankly, when you really think about it, catching a Mega Pokemon in broad daylight not that bad it means you can put in some extra effort <laughs> get a couple potions make sure you got your best of the best pokemon some pokemon that you already mega and next thing you know boom got you another mega and like i said it's anything and i'll just throw i'll just throw i'll just throw my caution to the wind on this one it's possible that legend za could have D have at least one dlc because I know they said, because Nintendo did say they had an intention to give, they had intention to give Legends Arceus a DLC because originally the plan was not to introduce Scarlet and Violet until 2024. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, until 2023. So it was like, the fact that they had initially planned for Legends Arceus to have DLC kind of makes me think like they could effectively go back a, go back a little further and you know <laughs> they might say hey let's run it back maybe we can do something better with this because if any of the leaks are correct which I'm again I say most of the leaks are like 50 and 50 so I never tell people to really believe leaks on their own because like I said could be taken for granted could be taken with a grain of, a grain of salt I feel like most people need to think about the possibilities of versus the possibilities against but anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think Mega Evolutions in the open world would be a good idea, or am I just gassing it up for no reason? Let me know in the comments.